Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Hilton, and I am. I just had to pull over uh, to, on my way to church this morning for our basketball and cheerleading program that starts this morning, and it's already started. The games are underway. It started about 40 minutes ago, and I'm excited. This is our fourth week of basketball and cheerleading and it's basically one of the biggest outreaches that we do and it takes up two full months uh, at the beginning of the year and it's an exciting time we see over a thousand uh, people or more walk on to our campus every Friday night and Saturday combined and from that we're able to share the love of Jesus and preach the gospel at every halftime and see young people's lives transformed and our coaches and volunteers and it pulls our people together it is a long day on Saturday and it takes a lot of volunteers to make that happen I want to give a shout out this morning to Peyton and Kim Williams who are our sports ministry directors and do a great job and have done a phenomenal job in leadership in uh, our sports ministry and I love them and appreciate them. Um, also want to shout out to all the coaches and the uh, parents and the volunteers and referees, uh, pe people that work in the kitchen and the concession stands and that run the uh, uh, award booths and the after the games we have a time where our students come together and they earn ribbons and awards and big shout out to all of them today uh, for serving and serving with excellence the scorekeepers the announcers the people that push brooms the greeters uh, it's just it just does everybody it takes an army of people to make that happen and today around 5 30 we're gonna ask for a special push from all of our church family to come out and just help us to you know, whip the the building back into shape for tomorrow, which is Sunday. And by the way, I want to tell you that Sunday morning is going to be an amazing time. We want you to come out 8.30 or 11. Our children's ministry is doing their big push uh, theme called Power Up. And Power Up is all about, um, you know, empowering our young people and our kids. And this week is going to be teach about obedience. So, we want you, to, moms and dads, get your kids out for that. And also, it's Sports Jersey Day. So wear your favorite sports attire uh, for whatever sport it is. Wear your jersey and have a great, great time uh, with us on Sunday morning. Just come out with your jersey on, and we're going to have fun. I'm also preaching on Sunday morning on this thought, you better fight me before I get there. And I'm going to talk about how your critics cannot detour you from your destiny. And if you know somebody that needs that message, then you need to get them here to Bethel Family Worship Center in Indianapolis. You can also watch online at bfwc.net. And so, uh, again, preaching this Sunday morning on you better fight me before I get there. And really, it's just the realization that is that once I have a, a knowing in my spirit and a knowing in my mind that God has equipped me and that God has prepared me and that God has given me revelation and, and gives, has given me leverage over my enemy, then the point is you better fight me or you should have fought me before I came into my revelation. And so that's my whole heart this coming Sunday is to talk about you cannot be distracted from your destiny by critics and haters and whatever. You just keep loving God, loving people and doing what he's called you to do. And your family is going to walk into that destiny as well. I wanted to talk to you this morning and I just had to pull over on my way to church this morning because this is heavy in my spirit. I talked to a guy this week and this leaped up in me and it got took me all the way back to 1985 where he spoke to my heart and for years um, 
when I would say, people would say, well, when were you called? And when, when did you feel the call to ministry? And, you know, ra raised up in a traditional uh, full gospel church, we kind of would talk like, well, I, I was called to preach at so-and-so. And the more that I have understood about the power of God's calling on my life, that it's not that I was just called to preach. We're all called to preach. Some just do it in a pulpit. But our lives are a living epistle, a book of God's Word read openly of all men. So my call is, and my platform for ministry is everywhere I go, everything I say, and everything I do. That's my pulpit, my platform for ministry. So I'm not waiting on someone to pass away for me to get their spot. I'm not waiting on my pastor to give me an opportunity to preach every fourth Sunday. My pulpit for ministry is everywhere I go, everything I say, and everything I do. So we're all called to ministry. But in 1985, God spoke to me at a youth camp in West Milton, Ohio, and he began to speak to my spirit. I thought that, you know, that was the big call. God said, I called you to preach my gospel. And that is what I felt God called me to do. But I now know that he was calling me to ministry. And really what he was saying to me is, I want you to sell out 100% and run after me and become a God chaser. Chase after me. And when I yielded to that and I said, yes, Lord, I yield to that. Then I begin to run after God. Sometimes, though, because of how we're raised in tradition and, and, and terminology, and we think anybody that's got a fiery testimony is called to preach. Well, again, go back to what I said. We're all called to preach. Some just do it in a pulpit. But our lives, our vocations, our occupations, everything we do is ministering the gospel if we choose to do that. And I, I, so it's not that just God gave me a, a, voca a vocal calling where I stand in a pulpit and preach. I'm called to minister. And that's what the Lord called me to do in 1985. I now know that clearer and see that he was called to minister, not just preach behind a pulpit. Ministry is seeing a need and meeting that need. That's what ministry is. And we got too many people in the body of Christ that want a microphone and want to hack in a mic and, 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 and call down an anointing and lay hands on everybody and then, uh, you know, broadcast it. Don't ask for the microphone if you haven't reached for the toilet brush. And the toilet brush anointing is when you can clean up, when you can be in the background, when you can serve wherever the need is, and don't need your name in the bulletin, and don't have to have your own 501c3, and don't have to have a gallon of oil poured on your head, and preach with a beach towel. You don't have to have any of that. Ministry is behind the scenes. And here's what I know. God has called all of us. Some he's called to leadership, and some he's called to followership. We have to have leaders, and we have to have followers. But we're all as anointed as one another. So it's not about a big I and little you and I'm this and you're that. We have to have leadership and we have to have followership. What would our churches be if we only had leaders and we didn't have followers? Now, get don't misunderstand me. Followers have to come into their leadership role. But we all have to follow someone, something. We all need to be walking together. So, uh you know, we just have too many people that just, if they're not in charge, they don't want to be a part of it. If they're not the one leading it, then they're not going to support it. We have to have leaders and followers that work together. And that is vital for uh, the future expansion and the building of the kingdom of God. And so when you're considering in ministry, Apostle Paul said this. He said, I thank God who found me, who saw me worthy to place me and put me in the ministry. Paul wasn't pumped up and arrogant and big talking. He was very humbled by the fact that God found him and saw him worthy and placed him in the ministry. 
And when you understand that you're not where you are today because of you, you're here where you are because God has put people in your life to push you and to promote you. And actually, because of the people who've come before you, you're standing on their shoulders. And when you stand on someone else's shoulders, you can look further ahead and see more than the generation before you because they have paid a price and positioned you there in ministry. So I want to encourage you to see ministry in the right way. Ministry is not about wearing a suit and slicking your hair back on Sunday. Ministry is working in the nursery. Ministry is, is out on the streets. It's, it's, it's sharing the gospel to the homeless. It's ministering to the widows and the orphans. It's making sure that someone has a, their stomach full because they've been hungry and haven't eaten for three days. And that you are providing a, something to them that is not just spiritual but very practical. Ministry is, is, is cleaning up cleaning, it's it's helping someone, it's driving someone to the grocery store who doesn't have a car. Ministry is just standing in the gap and making up a hedge. And we have got it so commercialized in the kingdom of God that all we see is what we see on TBN or Daystar or on the internet. And we think, oh man, that's the epitome of, of ministry. Bless God, God called me. Well, he may have called you, but Honestly, your calling is going to, always going to be a process. Ministry is not a ladder you climb. You don't just say, well, right now I'm a youth pastor, but one day I'm going to be a lead pastor. As if being a youth pastor is a lesser ministry. You're just as called and anointed of God in youth ministry that you are uh, in adult ministry. In fact, when you're in adult ministry, adult ministry you realize you're still in youth ministry. You are called to everybody. Now, your gifting may put you in advantage to a certain people group, and I agree with that, but you are called to everybody when you're called to ministry. So don't view ministry as a, a ladder that you climb. Years ago, I had this one pastor who came to me, and he, he meant well, but he was speaking from tradition. And he, he, he said to me, um, are you sure God called you? Uh, you know, because God was kind of moving me in another direction. And I said, yeah, I really feel like this is what the Lord is leading. And I've, I've got affirmation from this, from my spiritual leaders, my spiritual fathers. They've confirmed what God already spoke. And I, I know spiritual authority and I know how to stay under authority. But I said, well, you know, I really feel it. Well, he just really, you know, just kind of come against me in that. Um, and, you know, his idea was that you climb this ladder of success. Oh, friend, who wants that? I don't want that. I want the will of God. God, If you rely on people to put you in a place, you'll be relying on people to keep you in a place. But you've got to trust God and know His mandate and calling upon your life. And ministry is not a ladder you climb. You can be more effective in the kingdom sometimes without the red tape. And so it's not a, a ladder you climb. It's a road you travel. When you walk the road of ministry, you just stay on that road and God will have you in a village, a town, a city, uh, a community, wherever. And you're going to serve in multiple areas. And the best thing that you can do is cross train yourself to learn everything so you become very valuable in the kingdom of God. But always remember, Jesus took a towel. He didn't wipe the sweat from his brow use a microphone and point into a camera and offer a free gift if they send money. He didn't do that. He took the towel and he wrapped it around his waist and he washed the feet of his disciples. You want to know what real ministry is? Ministry is getting down low. Low enough that you can reach the cobwebs and the dust bunnies under the furniture. And when you can serve with excellence, with a right spirit and with a right heart when you're doing the menial tasks. God will put you in a place where he can use you to do great things for him in his name because he can trust you because you've learned to wear a towel around your waist. And I am on my way this morning to our church where we're offering basketball all day today. Ten games from eight will end at six. And I'm going to work with some of the most wonderful people.
who have understood what real ministry is. Ministry is not a title. It's not a position. It's not uh, running. It's running after the God-given dream and vision He's put in your heart and, and seeing yourself as an encourager and a servant to other people in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying that uh, it's just the body of Christ. You serve in the world. And there will be times you'll be squashed and pushed down and laughed at and made fun of. But you just keep on doing what God's called you to do. And you keep a pure heart and a right perspective. Because you are very valuable to the kingdom of God in whatever capacity you serve. If you, if you serve uh, in the church, out of the church, in a parachurch ministry, or wherever you serve, stay accountable and stay humble and work in that capacity and do it with a hundred percent and God will bless you coming in and bless you going out and he will increase you and you're gonna find blessing on top of blessing just because you are in the right place doing the right thing now let me say this I've got a lot of people that uh, run after position and title uh, I have never ran after a position. Position has sought me out. However, I learned this. I don't just sow into any field. I make sure the seed that I sow is in the fertile soil because I want to harvest. I don't want a thir I don't want just a 30-fold. I may get a 60-fold, but I'm really pushing for a 100-fold, and I would love to have that kind of return on my investment. So I, it's very important who you align yourself with. Um, why on earth would I just go to any church just because they offer me a position if I don't have the vision of that house? Not only the vision, but the values of the house. Um, having experienced the fullness of God's power, how could you ever go to a place where the power of God is limited and not allowed to be fully expressed? So my heart is stay where the Lord has planted you and rooted you and run after Him, give everything you have, and let the power of God enable you and equip you and strengthen you. Put the towel around your waist and keep on serving. And today, I'm going to surround myself with people at our church and from our community that are serving. And we're going to just give it everything we got. We're going to play basketball. We're going to eat uh, hot dogs. We're going to have fun. And we're going to enjoy what God has enabled us to do. Because like I said, this is one of the biggest outreaches that we do. And I'm pushing for souls. I'm pushing to see families change. I want to see people make, uh, make it across the finish line and enjoy life, not just endure life. But it starts with a, with a seed in the ground and just plowing that seed or plowing that ground, putting that seed in, fertilizing it, watering it, keeping the weeds out, and then coming and getting the harvest. We're believing for souls, and I hope you are too. I hope wherever you serve in ministry that you're getting up underneath the arms of your leader and that you're supporting and you're involved. I also hope that if you are that leader, that you're encouraging your team and you're strengthening their hands and praying for them and you're offering anything you have at resource to encourage and equip them. We all get tired. We all get weary and well-doing. Uh, according to Galatians 6, 9, he tells us, don't become weary and well-doing for in due season you reap if you faint not. But we do get tired. So we need a shot in the arm and we need encouragement from the body of Christ. So use your gift today. Use your ministry on this Saturday. Don't let Saturday be the unused day of the church. Let it be the most used day of the church. Use it to to, to propel the gospel, to invite people to church, to, to go out and do something in the community that's going to make an impact on somebody's life. It's not about just pointing people to your church. It's about building the kingdom of God. So get a right perspective of ministry and allow the Lord to use you in any capacity. Love you all. Appreciate you for watching today. Hope you have a great, great Saturday and a powerful Sunday. Don't forget to wear your jerseys tomorrow at Bethel where well, it's Jersey Day. Any sport that you love, come out and have a great time. See you at 830 or 11 o'clock a.m. God bless you. Everybody have a fantastic Saturday.